Welcome everyone, welcome. Welcome to another episode of Son of Elijah. My name is Mac the Lion and I'm your host for this program. We continue our series on the criminal enterprise of false prophets. The criminal enterprise of false prophets. The Babylonian hire that is popularly called the false prophet, who is an individual that has literally compromised themselves to be plugged into by a snake. You see, that snake is looking for a home and is looking for a host. And in order for that snake to find a home and a host, he needs someone who has compromised. Compromise is the way you get plugged into. And Satan will tempt you with everything until you start compromising. Without a compromise, there is no way he can be able to plug himself into you. The devil is out there. The snakes are out there. This is the head of the dragon, which is the serpent. And that is a lying, deceiving spirit that hijacks the prophetic ministry from so many people. And then they now become agents representing mystery Babylon on the earth. And many at times they don't even know they are Babylonians. Do you know that most Babylonians don't even know they are Babylonians? Most people who are compromised by the installation of wickedness in their membrane, wherein the serpent has plugged into them and is now powering them and using them as a host to mutilate the lives and the destinies of people, confuse them, get them off the beating path, manipulate their existence into the trajectory of ruinage and ultimately taking them to hell if possible because that enemy will keep trying to do everything he can to ruin lives and that's why with so many saints today having itchy ears they are itching away because literally the compromise that compromise is there and with that compromise itchy ears will come to listen to what those snakes that have lodged themselves into that individual is now using to mutilate to manipulate and literally lie during they are able to cause individuals to fall into the hands of the enemy and that is what is becoming prevalent in our world today. We gave an example from the book of Samuel because Samuel was an individual that was called into the office. But at the point he was called, he had no office. All he had was a calling. He heard the voice of the Lord. Prior to that time, he had no inclination. He had not intimated with God at that point in time. So he didn't know the voice of God. Neither did he know the voice of of his maker and the very word of the living God. So when he heard that voice, fortunately enough, he was with an established official priest who was functioning as the high priest in his day. His name was Ella. Yes, he was a terrible father because he didn't raise his children well, but he was a good priest. He carried himself in all purity and excellency. He was a man of moral high standard. And that's why if you are going to be with an ally who will show you the voice of the Lord and tell you what to say or do when that time comes, it has to be someone that has character. Unfortunately, in our world, we are looking for those who have a show. We are looking for those who are popular on television. We are looking for those who people are quiescent to. We are looking for those who people are calling all kinds of names, strange names that laudates them and tries to puff them big like as if they are the second coming of Christ. We look for those things. Rather for us to look for good, clean-hearted prophets who know the word of God, who know God, who are humble in heart, who will not live in the seductiveness of the luxuriant ambushment of wickedness. Those who will not sell their soul for for the for 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 money or for what they can get or for luxury or for or for women or whatever many people are entrapped by they stay away from the table of Jezebel but we're in a day and an hour where so many people are falling into the era of Balaam they have actually dipped themselves into the entrapment of wickedness and systematically and gradually they have wasted their destiny and caused themselves to now become instruments of falsehood individuals rightly identified as falsifiers that's why in that day jesus said that many will come to him and say but lord we know you you know us we work for you we raise the dead we open blind eyes we heal the sick we manifested in all forms of way we, we worked miracles all in your name
him. And Jesus will say, please, can you just depart? Can you move away from me? Thank you very much. Because I knew you not. I don't know you. Because you're a worker of iniquity. And that means your thought was evil concerning the actions you took. It was all for what you can get. All those prophetic things you did was just to make yourself puff. Like as if you are great. And the reason why people do all those things to make themselves great is because they are trying to see if they can accelerate and make others feel that their establishment is of excellency because they are trying to, you know, present themselves like as if they are unique or special. Like one guy that was trying to tell me, you know, I'm special, there's something about me and all that. I said, yeah, so also was Moses. And yet God told Moses, go to the mountain and die now. And when Moses tried to change his mind about his decision, God said, no. And Moses was a good man. Unfortunately, he struck the rock when the Lord said, speak to it. And he didn't sanctify God before his people by the word. And because of that, it costed him his destiny. And God even gave him an opportunity to make another mistake. With that singular stroke, Moses was no more allowed to enter the good land, the promised land. So when he had brought them to the edge of Mount Pisgah and brought them to the edge of where they would not be able to cross over Jordan to the promised land the lord said this is where you get to end your journey you can't enter simply because you did not trust believe and speak in line with that which i've commanded you to do and yet moses was extremely extremely exceptional creature but yet god would not compromise on his standard so how much more many of us who if we vanish today no one will even know we're gone but the way we carry ourselves in pride and haughtiness like as if we are the second coming like as if there's nothing as smooth as us like as if you know, we are everything and we boast of all our miracles and the things we work. And many at times those things are false miracles. Many at times these individuals don't know that they work for Babylon. They don't know they are plugged into strange spirits. They don't know that the actions and the things they are doing is a contradiction of God's word. And they are simply living out a life that is not of Christ. And they are living out an existence that literally contradicts the faithfulness of God's word. And then they continually think that God will gloss over those things. They not knowing that every challenge, every situation, every temptation is all designated and permitted in some cases by God in order for you to prove what is in your heart. And every maker who manufactures something and knows what it can carry or the weight limit is not budged at all when he sees you trying everything you can to literally put them in that trajectory whereby they are under pressure to possibly compromise because it's just a test. God does not tempt anyone but God will allow you to be tested and those testings are designed to prove the quality of who you are and what you are carrying and what you are designated to accomplish on the earth today. So you need to understand the trajectory of that which God has called you onto. And without the testings, you cannot be proven. God wants to prove your greatness. God wants to prove if you are qualified to be chosen of him. For many truly are called, but only very few would ever be chosen. And only the chosen are the anointed. And the anointed are those who have received commandments and angelic beings to back them up with results. You see? And that is what establishes God's people in the trajectory of what he has called them to do. Remember what the Bible says and makes it very clear. Believe in the Lord your God, you shall be established. And when you believe in his prophets... You shall prosper. Before the prophet can prosper you, you must be established in God. God is the prerequisite leading up to the prophet. The word of God is the prerequisite that will establish you in God before the prophetic can now come in to bring you closer to God. Until you are faithful with the written, exposed, known word of God, you will never qualify for the private, for the private prophetic word that is designed to elevate you. Many at times people are looking for a prophet but they don't ever obey the written known word of God. There are sins that is very consistent in their lives and these contradictions of sins never allow them to be rooted in Christ. And as a result of that they never get to a place of opportunity where the word of God can ground them and they have a living relationship from which they can now transition from now being you know, faithful with the general word and then they qualify for the personal. 
There are a lot of people that are doing things that are not right, but still hope to get prophesied to. And that's why they start looking for the prophesy on demand, the ATM profits. If you put it in, your card in, make a demand on them with resources, immediately they have a word for you. And many at times, all this ATM on demand profits are designed specifically to mislead and ruin. And because they are, you are all feeding off each other's weaknesses, they are feeding off your own weakness of literally looking for God in wrong places. And you, and they also, and you also are feeding off their own weaknesses of the, of you looking for wherever you can find God in any way possible, just to get a word that you need in order for you to move forward. And with all that comes the confusion and the trajectory of wickedness that is propelling this destructive agenda, wherein Satan is running an army literally from from the backbone of Babylonian enterprise of wickedness that hires the false prophets and also, of course, the false teachers. And the prevalency of this continues every single day because people are trapped in a belief system that they don't understand clearly how the methodologies of God work. You have to be established first in God through his word before you can now have access to the prophetic. The written word, the established word is what establishes you first. And then you now move over to the spoken moving word, which is now what leads you more specifically to the specificity of that which is designed exclusively for your destiny. Because there's something God is telling you that is not for me. There's something God is saying for me that is not for you. That's why all these people who release hundreds of thousands of letters saying God is saying this, and then everybody, the the Lord is saying this, Father in heaven is saying this to 100,000 people, and everything that that word says is for everybody simultaneously. is madness. Is madness. There's no way God talks like that. Words are meant to be specific to individual to individual. I have ministered to people, 20, 30 people a day, and each person's word is different. Each person's revelation is different. Each, each person's resolution. Some is rebuke, some is elevation. Some is encouragement, some the Lord is telling them they need to watch it. Some, they are being delivered. Others, they are being told that they need to be careful what steps they need to take. It's never the same. Now, it, the written word of God is general. Now, that one is not prophecy. That one is established logos. The written word of, word of God that is designed to grow you. And once you have the doctrinal foundation of understanding the word of God, then you know him. That's why the Bible says at that time that Samuel did not know the Lord because he did not know the word. And because he did not know the word, it was not revealed to him. The voice of God was not yet revealed to him. So he couldn't connect with God. And that's why he kept running back to Eli because he, had, he was hearing a voice and truly he heard the voice of God. But unfortunately, he didn't know it was the Lord that was speaking to him. But eventually when he arrived once again to his mentor, who was Eli, Eli now said go back but this time i want you to simply say that lord speak for your servant heareth and with that singular conversation with that singular word with that singular revelation they were able to immediately ascertain that the lord was speaking he was able to ascertain that the lord was speaking to him and the first formal introduction was there so i still read from first samuel chapter 3 and i will read from verse 9, Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be he called thee, and thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, the Lord came and stood literally over him, and then called us at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And then Samuel answered and said, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And then, of course, the Lord now started telling him what he wanted to do in all Israel, how God wanted to judge the household of Eli, and how God was going to establish him, and now he will become a prevalent voice that's going to represent the mandate of God for all of Israel. So all those things were revealed to him. And as a child, of course, Eli did ask him the next morning, and then Eli made him literally vow or swear that he would not hide anything from him. And then at the end of the day, he told him everything. And Eli said, let the Lord do that which the Lord would do. Hallelujah. Because at that time he was kind of content with whatever God was ready to do because he was tired of his sons. He couldn't fix the situation and now God's judgment had come. But the judgment was not against Eli. It was against his sons. But of course his descendants were going to be halted dead in their tracks simply because of the fact that his sons 
polluted God's house and it was so odious in those days to bring things to God's house. So I, re- I continue my reading from verse 19 of the same book of chapter 3 of the book of Samuel. And then Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and did let none of his words fall to the ground. So Samuel grew in the Lord. Samuel grew in spiritual things. Samuel grew in the voice of God. Samuel grew in the character of God. Samuel grew in the nature of God. You see, Samuel grew in the Lord. And as Samuel grew in the Lord, Samuel grew in the depths of God. Samuel grew in the very knowledge of God. Samuel grew in the very revelations of God. So his nature and his character was lining up. He knew what to do. He knew what not to do. He knew when to speak. He knew when to hold his horses. He knew when to prophesy. He knew when to decline from saying anything. He knew how to conduct himself. He knew his behaviorals. He knew not to take bribe. He knew not to be respect all persons. He knew how to relate with the opposite sex. He knew how to conduct himself every time he was around people who desired him in their presence. He knew how not to respect anyone for money or what they could give him. He knew how not to do any of those things. So as he was growing, he was sure it was clearly that Samuel in his own personality was diminishing while Christ or God or Jehovah the Lord God Almighty by his spirit was growing in him. Like what John the Baptist said, he said, I must decrease but he must increase. And that should be how we grow. He said, we must, John said, we must decrease. And to decrease means that you need to diminish so that Christ will fill up all things in your life. So that your weakness can shrink. So that your selfishness can shrink. So that for what you can get can be taken away. And that's exactly what happened to Samuel. And the Bible says, and all Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. That means he was established in the word. Remember, when you know the Lord your God, you will be established. And you get established by being established in his word. The word of God will ground you. So many of us see these prophets who are doing silly things, but we don't say much because in our understanding and mentality, we believe that, you know, God has called them and their prophetic is so in line and people are healing them. And as a result of that, they can do no wrong. Literally, they can do no wrong. And we don't know quite a good number of them are Babylonians. Babylonians are not individuals who went to seek for powers from the depth of wickedness. Yes, there are pastors and ministers who went to dark powers in the woods, who went to consult witch doctors and strange entities to take powers for which their ministry is growing. And they have tried to get numbers at by any means necessary. And as a result of that, the spirit of compromise have given them leeway and they've been given things for which they are using to do ministry. I will give you an example. There was a man... I I heard him because he was talking to me, literally, and a few other people who were in that room. And he said something happened to him. He said there was a man in his area where he was pastoring a church. He met him recently in a convention. And then the man, after speaking with the man, he learned that his church was not far from where his was. So they became buddies and friends. And every once in a while, he would visit him. He said, but it was a Sunday. He needed something to get from him quickly. It was a Saturday night again, Sunday morning. So he got up and said, well, let me go see this friend. He called him, but his number was not going. So he said, okay, let me just, since his church is not far and his home is not far. So he made his way to his house. And when he got there, his daughter told him, the daughter of the man told him that, oh, daddy's out. He left, but not, not a long time ago. He just left. But the way he was dressed and he didn't drive a car, that means he didn't go far. So the man said, okay. And then as he got outside, he asked someone, do you know the direction the pastor went? The prophet that was here, where, where he said, oh, someone said, oh, he went down this way. And I think he's heading towards that direction. I just saw him like five minutes ago. If you hurry up, you'll catch up with him. So he started motioning very quickly. And then he went through that channel very quickly, but couldn't find him. And then he saw someone. He said, did you, you know, the, the pastor or the prophet who's known in this area? He said, yes, he says, I saw him go that way. And then he went and followed that man. He said, but this happened like two, three more times, two or three more people who kept pointing. At some point, the journey started changing. He was no more on the regular highway or the road, you know where he was walking or people should walk now he was becoming into a path on a winding road down down some type of bush and then he began to ask himself hey i don't think i really need to see this man today what is this but something told him to just continue and say as he came to a certain junction he was running into a young man and he said please there's a pastor in this community did you see me say yes i saw him he just went that way just now and so he immediately he went down and then he found himself under a bridge and then went through a path and then all of a sudden he looked he said he saw the man standing with another man the man he was standing with is a harbalist in africa we call it harbalist 
but he's a voodoo priest that's what he is literally he's a witch doctor and he was standing with this man and immediately this man saw him the man motioned to him oh come through and then he stopped he said no he was like no you come i don't know what you guys are doing they said no come come i'm discussing something that is quite important and uh, uh you could come there's no problem since you're already here you better come he said no that i would rather wait here when you're done with whatever you're doing i don't want to come there because it looks very suspicious and then the old man shouted out belted out to him and said my son come come why what is come what are you afraid of come your people come to me all the time your people are here with me all the time come come let me help you too you're having church tomorrow right you need help come let me help you grow your church the man said what he did not believe what his ears the man was so confident the old man back on and come let me help you grow your church let me help you let me give you what you can use so that members can be filled and all your chairs will be come and then the guy said no he turned around and started moving fast and before you know he found himself running literally escaping from his life he said that was the last time i spoke to that man that's the last time i ever had anything to do with him that's when i knew that this man even though he's a pastor was consulting strange spirits using the territorial principality and the agent of a witch doctor who was within that territory and using it to work strange miracles to draw people to church to perform strange wonders and literally falsify and deceive the people People onto accelerated ruinage. That is exactly what is happening in many corridors. Now, these individuals are not doing it with a blind eye. These ones are wizards. Those are the ones we call the wizards. And we've talked about a lot in some of our series about these wizards and the traffickers. Because these are professional traffickers. They go and collect strange powers. They know what they got. They know that those powers are contaminated. I remember a man was telling me that his own pastor sat with him. And you see, when I give you examples, I don't do hear, hear stories. No. I don't even give examples from what people watch on television or watch from YouTube or Facebook. That's not my way. If I give you an example, it's either it happened to me directly or the person who had that encounter is talking to more and telling me exactly what happened that's how i tell my stories so i only do first-hand accounts telling you the truth so i'm not just here to come and be a fabler i'm telling you the very foundation of destruction that is on a pace on the in the church and destroying the lives of too many people this man told me clearly that someone tried to recruit him to come and also take powers from a witch doctor for which a pastor and the witch doctor said many of your people come to me this is where they get what they use for their churches what is wrong with you come let me help you like the rest and then they may give you a, a, some type of paraphernalia or they will tell you to tie this under your pulpit that's what they are doing I'm telling you, and it's prevalent in Africa. There's so much of it in this neck of the woods, literally. And they've exported their garbage to the West now. And you see some of all these showman, you know, churches where these individuals are performing strange wonders. I remember a man told me clearly, told me face to face. He said, like I said, first hand encounters. Sure, I'll give you two stories. The first one, the man, the other man said, I will invite you. He said, we're inviting a guest minister and that man is powerful. That man will work miracles. That man will do this and that. The church is going to be full. We're going to do advert for the next two, three months. We're having a revival and this mighty prophet is coming. This mighty prophet is coming. And as they had that conversation, the man now said, ah, now this man is only an elder in the church. And he was asking him about the man. He said, well, let me just tell you the fact. The fact is that this man's power is not real. So what do you mean, sir? He said, no, he collected it from a strange place. And then the man was like, but sir, we shouldn't invite him. He said, no problem. He knows how to raise offering. He knows how, he knows how to call people out. Who will give 10,000? Who will give 20,000? Who will give 5,000? Who will give 1,000? He knows how to do those things. And that thing is not scriptural. It's not biblical. It is actually wrong. And that is the truth. You say, no, we can't raise offering in the church. You don't call numbers. Tell the people, tell the people the project they are giving to and tell them that they should be a part of it and let the people give will willingly. You know why you don't want to do that? Because when you call the numbers out, then you compel them and pressurize them and keep repeating it until some of them that are well-dressed say, everyone is looking at me, even $5,000, I can't get up. And then they get up. You know it works and that's why you use it. It's a money-raising mechanism.
But that's not how the original church did it. People are to give, but they are to give willingly, and you shouldn't call numbers. Don't tell them how much they are to give. An offering is an offering, a vow is a vow. Let them do as according to the Lord. Of course, if people are giving for a building program, or people are just giving for a new camera in church, the cost is not the same. So the project is bigger, and so they may need to dip their hands deeper in their pockets to be able to fund that project. And for that reason, there's nothing wrong in telegraphing exactly what you want to do. We are building, and we intend to finish in a year. So please, be a part of it and let the Lord bless you as a result of building a place for him so that all of God's people could gather and then they could have an encounter that is so accelerated and established so that they can attain and give and be able to be productive and resourceful in the fullness of the capacity of which God has called them to do and then bless them even for giving to his work and to the ministry and to the Lord ultimately. And then when the people give to God is willingly willfully and they should not even telegraph how much they give best practices they shouldn't telegraph best practices they should even write it on a piece of paper if it's a vow they should just write it down and let it be secret they shouldn't telegraph it no one should know the bible says if you are giving your offering in church if you are giving to the lord let your left hand not know what your right hand is giving or doing but what are we doing now? We are professionally telegraphing the givings because we want to compel and put pressure on people to give even when they are not properly in line with it. Now, there's a lot of people that will listen to this and they don't like it. But I have to tell you the truth. I have to tell you the holy truth. I have watched these mechanisms and I have seen exactly what is going on. And with that alone, they are using it to bamboozle God's people. So that prophet... Or that pastor was saying he's inviting this minister specifically to get him to come and you know get every other person excited to give and he's a professional offering raiser he's a milker a professional milker a professional trafficker of the gains you know of the kingdom for their personal aggrandizement and all that schedule is only for one thing and one thing alone, so that they can have the money that they need for what they call ministry. Well, many a times they are not ministering to anyone. Their God is their belly. Many a times they are not ministering to the, to the people of God. They are just creeping them. They are just raping them. They are just taking everything that they can as it were. And I've met people who say, after I've done those things, I'm broke. After I've done those things, things go from bad to worse. That's exactly what happened because that man is carrying a snake. And since he has a snake, he will swallow your glory with that money. As you submit that money, you enter into perpetual dryness as a result of the fact that you are trying to fund Babylonians. And every time you try and fund Babylonians, you're actually diminishing your own resources. They will take your star and your resources with it. That's why once you read or listen to my teaching on how they traffic souls, you will see clearly that I made it very clear that these traffickers are agents of manipulations and wickedness and they are using those instruments to accelerate the demise of many and make sure that they do not attain the relevancy of that which the Lord has scheduled for them. So there is a tenement, there's a foundation, there is an understanding that we need to come into if we are going to gain traction in the things of God. And then in another story, very clear, carefully, this man said another instance this man said he was in a church and a certain minister was invited to preach and he's a prophet and the guy was doing his thing running left running right doing all these things and then he begins to tell the people bring together all your prayer points gather them and then the people put it all together and then he said now we are going to see the power of god we're going to see the glory of god we're going to see the kingdom of god we're going to see god answer the people you're going to see the mighty move of the days of elijah and he said let the god answer by fire come down right now and receive of all the testimonies and all the prayer requests and everything that is put here and let that fire fall and consume exactly all the prayer points and immediately immediately it was ignited and fire broke out right in the church and consumed all the paper and all the prayer points and all the people started screaming this is god this is god power Woo! and they were clapping and this part of the world you know their suckers are born every second not every every second there's a sucker born literally falling into this dismay and this man said he looked at this looked at the ground looked at the fire and said this is magic this man is a magician my pastor just invited a magician because that's magic actually. For you to call fire and appear as you're a magician, in God's kingdom you can't do it. In God's kingdom it won't happen. You say, but how about Elijah and the, and the prophets of Baal? Where's your own prophets of Baal? 
and where it's your own uh, uh, where it's your own agency that you are trying to bring down and turn God's people voices or God's people's heart back to the Father who gave you to them. You have to understand that that was a one-off. That's number one. Number two, has anyone ever had a burning bush experience again after Moses, wherein the bush was burning but it was not being consumed? Has anyone ever seen such a sight? God doesn't repeat things. Only once did in the Bible that the Bible said there was death in the land and there was famine in the land and there was dryness and people planted and there were no crops. Elisha now said, please bring me a bowl and then bring me some water and then bring me some salt. And then he poured it into the water and then he spoke over it and then he dissolved it and then he poured poured it all over the land and then he declared the land to be free of the dirt and, and be free of the famine and then bountifulness and lusciousness to return so that the fatness of the land can nourish the crops and so that abundance can be restored to the land and because he did it it happened in the days of Elisha but what do we have today we have people everywhere looking for salt for prayer they were looking for salt you can't pray for them they say they need salt I see all these crummy foolish individuals who call themselves prophets I don't know who they are and they just come up with crazy things they tell people to do and I'm gonna go into some of those dimensions and when I see these things I begin to wonder I remember one time I was trying to minister to a man he's a Hindu he's not even a Christian I was trying to bring him to the Lord and he told me he said the other time you know my roof is leaking badly now I said what happened to you he said because a pastor came to my house and said that and I told him that devils you know demons and all these things were showing up in my life and I needed help and he said what he did was that he told me to bring salt and I brought a lot of salt and then he mixed it with water and started pouring it all over my house and on my roof. All those salt ended up being corrosive to the to to the sheet that covers my roof and now it has dog holes everywhere. And now I have to be calling carpenters to try and fix my leaky roof. And he said at the end of the day the devils and the demons never left but at the end of the day there's salt everywhere. Just from one scripture they made it a religious ritual and that ritual now is now a common practice that is done everywhere. And all this behavioral has become a norm in many places. I've seen many pastors. They will tell you, bring this. They will tell you, bring that. They will tell you, bring this amount of, of this. They will tell you, bring all the currency in the world. They will tell you, all kinds of things that they come up with. And when people bring it, they say, that's how we're going to work on money. But the man talking, talking that way is living in sin. The man telling the people to also do that thing, he's telling them to do, and not living right. And then every sinner there is hoping that somewhere, somehow, through all the shortcomings, and all the misgivings and all the bad behavior and all the corruption and evil present that God will find his way to break into them and give them a harvest and a bumper harvest and a breakthrough they cannot contain. How foolish is that? How does that even work? God does not reward the wicked. God does not reward the wicked. If you make up your mind to do things that are contradictory to his word, it will immediately bring you to a place where those limitations and those falsifications will now accelerate your life down, down, the, down the path wherein that you are literally ruined if you are not careful. And that is exactly what is prevalent in our world today. So if you don't understand these things, you will not understand why there are so many falsifiers today. Now, I have given an example of those who consciously go to falsifiers and get individuals literally as it were who are witch doctors and take powers from them and come back to church to grow the church by force and some of them would travel to strange shrines and those pastors collect these powers because they are so much hungry for self-glorification they are so much hungry for you know in pride because they want people to come by all means they sort of them provide pasture and trust the lord to bring them through so that they can come eat good food rather they will rather compromise and then suture some resources and buy whatever they need to buy from these which doctors traffic with their own souls and they're now motion to also traffic with the souls of all those who have found them to be leaders in their capacity. This is exactly what is prevalent in our world today. And that's why there's so much limitations and confusions. There's so much setbacks. People are asking themselves questions. Should we be able to follow these people and trust that the God who has called them can lead us to the promised land as it should be? And many at times, they don't know that these individuals are falsifiers and misleading them into the abyss. And then, of course, now we have individuals who don't even know that they are falsifiers. They don't consult any strange powers. They they don't follow any any devilish entity they are just living their lives but unfortunately they run out of the place of waiting on god 
because you see Samuel tarried in God's presence until he knew the voice of God. Samuel tarried with the word of the Lord until he had revelation of God. Samuel tarried with God until he knew the voice of God. Samuel tarried with God with God until the flame and the fire of God was burning hot in his life. Samuel tarried with the Lord and in the temple until he was established, until it was proven that his words do not fall to the ground and that everything he spoke lines up with God's kingdom and God's scripture. So Samuel understood this and that's how he was able to grow into the trajectory of the greatness he accomplished in his lifetime and that's why he is still one of the greatest Old Testament prophets because he went to war, he did so many things. He was the one that even anointed the new generation of of prophets or should I say kings which were now the first set of kings that ruled over all of God's people in the land. He was the one who inst who anointed David he was still the one who anointed Saul. And you see, you have to understand the dimension of Samuel because he was one who had the quality of authorization having been having waited on the Lord in all directions. So that's why this scripture that we read from, from verse 19 says, And Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and the, the Lord did not let any of his words to perish or to fall to the ground because Samuel was connected with God. Samuel followed the trajectory of God's command. Samuel, God proved and manifested in his life. And that's why in verse 20, he now says, and all of Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established as a prophet of the Lord. Everyone knew that he was the real deal. He was authentic. He was of God. And that's why they trusted so much in him. And in verse 21, and the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself even to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. So God reveals himself by the word. A lot of prophets don't know the word. A lot of prophets don't know the truth. A lot of prophets don't have encounters that are rooted in God's word. Even when people share their personal experiences, visions, dreams, revelation, we still look at it from the backdrop of the word of the living God because no one is superior to God and no one's encounter is superior to God's commands and no one's experiences can ever be elevated higher than the very centrality of the word of the living God. And so based out of that, we have come to a place where we need to understand the direction and the dimension of that which the Lord has scheduled for us so that we are able to to take full advantage of the commands and then accomplish the purpose for which we are created. Anything less than that, we cannot attain the relevancy of the greatness that God has scheduled for us. Samuel became great because he knew what the Lord had called him to do. He knew what his assignment was. He knew how he needed to stay faithful in all things. He was committed to the skill and the development of that which was required for him to be a functioning prophet who had the characteristics and nature, who had the very essentiality of God, who had the very love of God. He had the fruit of the Spirit. If you are going to emulate anyone, you have to emulate someone that has character. It can't be just because they are powerful. Oh, I saw the way God used him. This is a mighty vessel. I want to be connected to this prophet. You will go and connect yourself with a professional Babylonian and you become meat for the devil and his agents of wickedness. And then they recruit you and then embed into your existence another instrument of manipulation that now makes you a representative of the agency of the criminal cabal of falsifiers and deceivers that are running and rampaging the earth and literally mutilating the destinies of many at a pace that we can't even explain what is going on. So how you follow someone is someone with character, is someone who has love, is someone who anger is not ruling his life, someone who the love of money and the desire for gain is not controlling his existence, someone who is not being mutilated by the instruments of wickedness and the agencies of darkness, someone who is following the trajectory of the alignment of the wisdom and the authority of God and and the mentality of God and the acceleration of God and the strength and the power of God's kingdom. Someone who is following through on the principles of that which God commands in good character and in good faith. Someone who is trustworthy that can be depended upon. Not someone who money cannot be around them. They want to take advantage of it. Not someone who if the opposite sex is around them immediately they are attracted and they want to see if they can partake from that filthification or the process they are in. Not someone who is debaucherous and has a love of money and greed and the desire for the things of this world and the luxuriant living that he will not stop doing what he's doing until he gets the resources that he wants and then tries to telegraph it and put it all in your face, posting it everywhere simply because they are trying to show you their luxuriant living rather than showing you the lives and the destinies and the souls that they have won for the kingdom and the lives that they have truly changed in line with that. These are the things that are very common in our lives now and in the seasons that we have found ourselves. So you have have to pay very close attention to this and that's why Samuel is the 
poster child for how to be raised, for how to be established. Samuel grew in the things of God. He was established in the truth of God's word. He followed the principles of the kingdom. He loved the Lord. He served with integrity. And that's why anyone who doesn't have integrity, you must never take a word from them. You must never follow them. You must never take heed to them. All these ones who are filled with compromises. I tell people all the time, I don't care what you don't like about me. If you find my sin, please paste it immediately. Go public with it. Don't hide it. Blow it big first and then tell me about it later. But it's not possible. You can't find it. And I've been saying, I've been telling people, this is two decades, this is three decades. Find my sin and put it out there. Come on, what are you talking about? Because I know you can't be sinning and don't know. You can't be a liar and a deceiver and you wouldn't know you are deceiving people. What are we talking about? We are selling the souls of men and we know it. Literally by the conduct of the things we are doing. We are telling them to do things that are unbelievable, despicable, just because of the Babylonian agenda that is driving the destinies of men and ruining them and using these falsifiers who are falling into the trap of Balaam. Literally the era of Balaam. We are ready to curse God's people for the gain that they are after. And when we see these things, we don't, we don't we don't shudder or shake and the warnings God said he warned them he's warning us now but many of us won't listen because we are carried away we prophesy prophesy we are carried away we gain one lady told me said you know what what did they do now on, on tiktok they will tell you what they can do what they can minister and whatever and they tell you their fee up front and then you send the money and everything together with it and then you send your picture and then a month later or three weeks later they will tell you how oh, the job is done just good to go and it's all lies and they are going from one place to another they put all their numbers and their name and then the account where you put the money this is the demise and the accelerated destruction of liars and deceivers and it seems like as if it's on the up, upward take but let me tell you listen to, to me listen to me good whether you like it or not the bible makes it very clear there were those who ate from the table of Jezebel who literally were, were falsifiers under the leadership of Ahab and as a result of that these individuals continue to sell and traffic in the ministry and the church falsifying lies and everything they are doing for their gain but a day came their judgment finally came and when it comes God the Bible says the person will be broken without remedy the Bible says he that continues to sin and does not address it nor repent he said eventually his demise shall come and when it comes there will not be a remedy because God has been warning them for so long but they are carried away with all the cheap enjoyments and the fake life and all the luxuriant stupidity that will not stop until they find themselves in the very belly of the abyss. The Bible says the love of this world, demons did leave me for it. You have to be careful for the love of the things of this world and the desires for gain and the big eyes to have it at all costs and the luxuriant vehicles and everything you want to drive. If it is your money and you can afford it, I am against it forever. If you have entered into God's inheritance but in this case most of them have not they are they are nowhere near fulfilling God's agenda for their lives they are just deploying literally just selling and trafficking the souls of many for their private gain and I will leave it here for today remember that Samuel was now established on in the Lord because God used him he was the authentic poster child for how a prophet should be raised having tarried in God's presence having waited on him stayed in hunger without food without nothing just keep waiting until the Lord comes through but if you go after the world and go and try and prophesy money out of people's pocket eventually you prophesy away your destiny and one day you just discover that you are so mutilated and corrupt there is no going back I told a, a man of God in a vision I said you've just crossed the line of no going back and when I saw it it shook me it was a very powerful vision and that is the end for him I don't care whether he can continue to do what he's doing he's gone He's gone. What I mean is gone, I mean that his soul is gone. He will perish and go to hell. That's what I mean by he's gone. He has crossed the, the Rubicon, the path and the line of no return. And they are crossing it every day because God has been speaking to them, but it gets harder and harder for them to hear. Eventually, sin blocks their heart and they can't hear nothing until eventually they, their demise is accelerated. And that's why you see them dying at a young age. So I was upset the other day. He said, you are talking about the prophet I believe so much in. Is it a sin to die early? I said, I didn't say because he died early is a, is a sinner. What I'm saying is that it's because he's a sinner, he's a son of the devil that God eventually killed him. And when God killed him, he died early. 
And that's exactly what I'm saying. So it's not someone dying early that makes them whether they have God or not. But this particular person is a devil and then God eventually killed him because I saw the angel of death that came to wipe him out. And when he wiped him out, he perished and is burning in hell today. He was a false prophet and he deceived so many and the followers of him are still believing in his falsehood because their souls were long gone traded to the devil and their losses will multiply on an end until eventually they perish. It's unfortunate, but they will hear this truth that I present from God's word. They will rather continue to believe the lies that they have continued to believe. Even in death, they will follow such wizards unto eternal perdition. It's unfortunate, but God told me one day I will never take responsibility for anybody's demise. I will continue to warn by the word of God and by those who are saying the right thing. A prophet told me one day, but I went to three, four people, they all told me the same thing. So I blame God for raising people who are now lying to me. I say, oh, so that's how your mind works. He now said, yes, because on judgment day, on judgment day, I'm going to tell God that it was you that raised all these people and it was them that lied to me. So as a result of that, God, you, you know, you are the one to blame. I say, oh, so that's what you are waiting for on judgment day. After they have brought you out of hellfire, right, to come and stand eternally, so you'll be able to condemn the most high God on the day of judgment. So that's your strategy for existence. You see, I've seen stupidity in layers. At times, it's, 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 it's sickening when you hear the depth of foolishness that some humans have. Yeah, I'm telling you the truth. Foolishness is one thing, but stupidity, I can't stand it. It's almost unbelievable what I hear people say. And I told him, I said, okay, all those people lied to you. You said it was God that called them. Okay, it was God that used them. It was God that raised them. Okay, God is also using me now. And God said, I should tell you that all those people lied to you. And that information is all deception. And it's Satan, Babylonian, strategic alignment will ruin and destroy your destiny and give you something to feast off that was designed to ruin and bring you to a place of eternal perdition. They are all liars and deceivers. And that woman you are talking about was sent to make sure you perish. So if I were you, throw those words away and then stay away from that woman because he, she's carrying a serpent and in her belly she's swallowing all your destinies from level to level. Everything you do will never work as far as you are connected to that person. You've been warned and this is the word of the Lord to you. And then I left it there. So let me just leave it here today. I will leave it here today. My name has been Mac the Lion and I am your host for Son of Elijah. If you want to continue to enjoy the series, please don't forget to subscribe. Please don't forget to be a part of what we're doing. Please don't forget to connect with our ministry. And if you want prayer, if you want help, if you want deliverance, if you want to be set free, someone told me years ago, he said, if the, if the real do not help people, don't blame the, the people for going to the fix. I said, well, the real has to also be commissioned and released. And when the time comes, then he will do it. I will not run off because people are in problem and start helping them when me, at that time, I was not even commissioned of the Lord for that. And that was way back in the year to thousand and one there about you know so you have to understand the dimensions of the wisdom of god so i had to come to that timeline but so we're in a place where we're able to help people we've been able to help people and we have helped too many people so please join us connect with us so that you can partake from that please also you could use the information description section to be a part of what we're doing you can also give both locally and internationally if you are led to do so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next episode bye <laughs>